Black Desert in 2022. Is BDO worth getting into right now? Is the game still alive? Is it still going? It's just had a big expansion, but is the game worth playing? Is it too late to get into it as a new player? And is it any good? That's other things I want to talk about in this video. So if there's anything specific you do want to see, I'll timestamp it or you can jump to that part of the video. If not, sit back, let's get into it from the start. Black Desert is a fully open world sandbox MMORPG with story, side quests, life skills, bosses, and some of the best combat in the MMORPG genre. This game has one of the best life skilling and profession systems, crafting systems in any MMORPG. It has undeniably some of the best and most immersive combat in anything else on the market. But with all its perks, it has one of the steepest learning curves, grindiest end games, and brutal RNG progression systems of anything else out there. I've tried to get into this game a few times in the past, like when it was called uh, Black Desert Online, uh, now renamed to just Black Desert, and I really struggled with this game. I love the combat, but I always felt overwhelmed as a new player. All the systems, the huge world, the hundreds of items that they just throw at you, all the pop-ups everywhere. It was just too much, and by the second day I probably quit. I don't think I ever got past level 20, but... I came back, there's a new expansion, I wanted to try it, I've heard a lot of good things about it, they've remastered the graphics since I played, and they've created something that I think is amazing for new players. There are now seasonal servers, tutorials, there's so much more hand-holding in the game, and I think the new player experience has been so much better improved. I've been playing a ton, I've just got my first character to level 60, and I, I thought I needed to make this video because I'm worried a lot of people are in the same boat as me, and haven't given this a real try because they're just intimidated. So why is this so much better now for new players? Seasonal servers. The way seasonal servers work is they not only give you a ton more experience and faster leveling, but they also spoon feed you seasonal gear and the items needed to progress that seasonal gear up through the ranks, completely removing the, the, the really divisive RNG progression system. They give you a starter set of gear, you earn items to rank it up from this seasonal server. You can then trade it in for a better set and then upgrade it all again. And when you're at max level and ready to graduate from the season, you switch it up for boss gear. So you can pretty much not worry about gear because it all just comes fed through the main story. As a new player, it was so helpful. Having like this tutorial and training rather than just throwing you out into the world was like a one less thing to worry about in this huge game. The current season runs till I think July, so if you're looking to try a new class, this is a great boost. Or if you wanna just get into Black Desert as a new player, I highly recommend this. If you aren't a new player or you don't like the idea of the seasonal servers, you can come back and start as a, you can start on like a veteran path where you've, you skip all the starting story and you start in the newest expansion, the, the latest content, the best content, well, in my opinion, the most up-to-date content at least, and you can go from level 1 to 50 in probably half a day. It's super fast. It's it's probably Black Desert at its best. So with all that out of the way, you can probably come and play this game and it's more accessible than it ever has been. Yeah, there's still a learning curve. There's still a lot of things in the game, but you will slowly progress through the story, slowly progress through the gear, and you will learn things at a good pace and pretty much everything will be handed to you until you get out into like the, the, the end game sort of areas and you get through all of the story and then you're kind of on your own. And by that point, you should have a good understanding of the game anyway. So why should you play Black Desert in 2022? Why should you put hundreds of hours into this game? The one thing that I think most of us can agree on, the combat. The combat in this game looks like a cinematic trailer. You can just turn your UI off, turn on the remastered graphics and watch this for hours. The combat feels impactful, fun, engaging, and it's a lot of the, one of the main reasons people can grind this for hours. On top of that, there's tons of classes to try, each with different builds, evolved builds, combos. There's so much to it, PVE and PVP rotations, single target, multi-target, grind spots, farm spots. One thing you hear a lot of veterans say is, despite any issues they have with the game, the combat always brings them back, and the combat is probably the best I've ever played in any MMORPG. With all the different classes, most classes when they get to level 56 I believe, get a, an awakening quest which lets you basically evolve your class. I was playing as a sage who kind of plays like the Time Lord, he, he opens portals, throws magic and he's very mystical. And then you take on a 
a awakening quest and you literally turn into Thor. I've played a bit of b-roll in the background of uh, me and my friend playing as some different classes. Hopefully that shows how good it is but nothing will feel as good as when you're doing it yourself. When you press that button, you jump in, you smash the ground and everything in that little puddle dies. It, it just does something. The endorphins in your brain just start firing up. It, it just feels good. <laughs> okay, outside of the combat, the next thing that is probably this might even be on par with combat for me and that is the life skill system which is pretty much professions or crafting and gathering however you know it from other mmos and i have yet to scratch the surface on this in this game there's 11 life skills in the game and each one is wildly in depth has their own gear equipment levels ranking economies uh, mini games crafting systems and so many of the systems are interlinked you you can get on a horse and start breeding the horses to have different ranks, train them to learn new skills, try and get higher tier horses, lead into dream horses, and that's just one skill in the game. That can lead to another skill called trading, where you buy a wagon and put it on a couple of your horses and you start trading goods between towns. Maybe you start fishing and cooking and then you start trading those items or you can go into processing where you dry the fish out or alchemy. There's, there's so many things you can get involved in here. I've, I've got fairly high up in a few of the different crafts but i have not even scratched the surface there's some things like hunting and sailing where i've i've not even not even got into yet that there, there are so many things and so many possibilities for life skills in this game i totally think i could if it, let's say the grinding in this game is too much for me and i couldn't handle it i could play this purely as a life skill game purely as a like a crafting and gathering simulation style game it's that good it really is on top of all that, the game is fully open world. If you have like a dream horse, for example, that can fly, you can fly from one city right down to the next. There's a worker system where you can invest your points into the different nodes on the map and hire workers. This makes the map feel so much more alive. You can hire a worker in, say, the port of Velia. Let's say you hire a little goblin, send him to work in a neighboring farm that you've gone and unlocked. And then as you're traveling back to Velia in the future, you might see a little goblin hauling your potatoes back from the farm to the city. And it just makes the world feel so much more alive. You've got other players running around, your workers running around. Because you've engaged with all the different nodes and systems, when you drive past, when you ride past a random farm, that's not a random farm. That's the farm where a certain worker that you've got is working for you. And it just makes things feel more alive. It makes the NPCs feel more alive. The areas feel better. And it all feeds directly into the life skill system. You want to be a cook? Send your workers to the farms and they'll bring back resources, potatoes and carrots, and they'll, you can then cook them into meals. Uh, I can make a whole series on the life skill system and how that connects to the, the worker system, but I'll stop here because we need to move on. The next thing is the character creator. It, it, it's great. Uh, it's, it's just great. You can adjust and drag pretty much any part of the face or body any <laughs> there's a beauty album as well too where you can see some of the coolest community creations and steal them and pretend that you made a really cool character which i definitely did um, i'll mention as well the remastered graphics which makes things just look stunning overall if you're creative this is 10 out of 10 if you're not you can steal some really good models here lastly alts this game runs a family system which i wasn't really aware of and a lot more than i expected is linked to your family system one of the big things for me is I moved from World of Warcraft to Final Fantasy and having all your different jobs on one character made the game so much better. Rather than where World of Warcraft you have to level loads of different characters and all your reputation and, and different things are locked to one character. In the family system of BDO, it's so old friendly, it surprised me. Your max energy, contribution, storage, gold, workers, invested nodes, quest log is all family bound. So it feels nice to have such an old friendly system where you can make a no new character, get it up to level cap and say, I just want to turn this guy into a farmer or a trader or I just want to PvP with this guy. It, it just feels good to not have to worry about all the side stuff. There are still a lot of things that are tied to player only, such as like your inventory space and things like that. But it, it might be also a lot more difficult if you're trying to get everyone as a max level combat job because the grind is long. But overall, this game is incredibly alt friendly and there's so many classes to try. That's such a relief. Okay, so the game's great. Everything's fantastic. The game's amazing. Go buy it, go play it. Video end, right? No. If everything was sunshine and roses, this game would be as big as some of the big MMOs, and it's not. I'm going to be honest here, there's some big issues with it, and it wouldn't be right of me to make this video if I wasn't honest. I think you can probably tell that I'm really into this game and I really like it, so I could easily just brush over these to 
promote the game, but I won't. There are problems and I want to talk about them. Number one, the RNG upgrade system. In every single MMO, there is an element of RNG. You play a theme park MMO like WoW, you're hopping into a raid every week and hoping your loot drops, you're hoping your mount drops, your pet drops, and you're waiting on a dice roll. But nothing I've ever played in nearly 20 years of MMORPGs is as painful as BDO. <laughs> I won't get into it too much or use the proper names of everything because it's too confusing. I'm not gonna start talking about cronstones and stuff like that because I don't wanna confuse new players. But basically your gear starts out standard and you can upgrade it to plus one, plus two, all the way to plus 15. And then they, you can go into like the superior levels like duo, tri, pen, and they're, they're five extra ranks on top of plus 15. And every time you upgrade it, the resources you need to upgrade it get higher and the percent chance of it upgrading goes down to the point where you can have a 5% chance of something upgrading. And that sounds, oh, you know, that's a little painful. That's quite hard. I bet there's a lot of saving up to get that upgraded. But the kicker, if it doesn't upgrade, it downgrades. So if you've got a, a try piece of gear and you try and upgrade it and it fails, it just goes down to a duo and you've got to get it back up to try with more resources. It's pure RNG and it's punishing. If you, if you get those, you know, there's a 20% upgrade chance and you just go for it and you get it, it's such a rush. It, it, it's like winning at the casino. But when something fails and you lose all your materials and downgrade it, it feels bad. To the point where some veterans will just ignore the system, grind out money from life skills or combat, and just buy their fully upgraded gear from the market rather than playing with this RNG system at all. Because it's so risky and so punishing, it can put a bad, bad taste in your mouth for the rest of the game. Next big issue, grinding. I for one am a big fan of grinding, switch your brain off, put some Netflix on the other monitor and just farm out a rotation and just farm mobs. But the reality is you're spending hundreds of hours doing the same thing over and over and over again and for most people that's boring. So uh, if you like grinding this is good or it's okay, if you don't maybe this game isn't for you because there is a lot of it in this game. There's no level cap in the game for the last time I checked so you can comfortably level to around 5860 and then Oh, it gets rough guys it really does with the new expansion you can probably get to 50 in around half a day i leveled the second character to 50 in about three hours maybe um after i'd already done the story so i skipped through the story pretty fast and did it in about four hours but then after you hit those late 50s it really slows down to the point where every level gets longer and you can be grinding for hours for 10 percent of a level it, it, I, i'm not sugarcoating it it's rough but i i wanted to mention it Another thing that kind of bothers me is the classes are gender locked. Not a huge issue, but something I'm not a fan of. If you want to play a pirate, you've got to be a woman. If you want to play an archer, you've got to be a guy. If you want to play as a shy, you've got to play as a child. It, <laughs> it's, it's pretty common. I, I saw this in Lost Ark. It, it, you see it a lot in games from the East, but it is what it is. Uh, if it's a deal breaker, now you know about it. If it's not, it's just annoying. Just play, you know, play as something that maybe you don't want to play as, but it's there. It, it is what it is. Anyway, as we create this whole video, I've purposely avoided one topic because it needs to have its own section. Is the game pay to win? Is Black Desert pay to win? Yes. <laughs> yes, it is. It is. It is. It 100% it, it is. Well, in my opinion, it 100% is. Um, I don't want to define pay to win and go into all that, but what are you winning? I don't know. But whatever it is, you're paying for it. Uh, you can pay for anything in this game. Everything I've mentioned in this video has small annoyances to it that can be completely removed with your credit card. Life skilling, you can buy pay to win outfits that increase your ability, scrolls to increase experience gain, energy potions, buffs, more and more and more and more. Gear enhancing, that is the RNG upgrade system. You can drop money on this as well. You can purchase a bunch of outfits on the Pearl store and sell them, or you can just buy stuff and buy your bits. You can buy the resources. You can buy everything from the cash store pretty much some way or another. Every roadblock in this game, if it can't be solved, it can be made better with the cash store. And that makes the game pay for convenience and maybe pay to win. In my opinion, it does, but uh, it, it, it is what it is. It is what it is. The game is getting better in this regard. I think it throws a ridiculous amount of items at you now from um in-game money upgrade materials cosmetics loyalty points that can be spent in in a different version of the cash store all the things i've mentioned above potions buffs inventory expansions life skill boosts experience boosts everything gets thrown at you in so many different ways as a casual player i don't think you need to spend a penny i really don't you get like three to five i can't even remember pets just from the main story i think you might max your pet limit just from the main story it, you get thrown so much stuff 
that I don't think you need to interact with the store as much as you might think you will. I purchased a season pass on my seasonal character when I first got the game because I thought, oh, I need all this stuff. There's so many upgrade materials. Didn't need a single thing. I quickly realized it wasn't necessary. I got bucket loads of everything. Some of the things I was worried about, I've got a stack of 500 now in my storage because they just throw it at you in the main quest. So you can pay to win, yes, but do you need to? That depends. If you want to be number one of something on your server, you want to be the best at something and you want to keep up with the whales, that if that's your winning, you do need to pay. If you just want to have fun and play the game, I really don't think you do. So before you rush to buy this or rush to get it, re-download it, whatever, is it dead? Do you want to come and play a dead MMO? Do you want to invest hundreds of hours in a game that's declining and the player count's dropping off? You see a lot with MMORPGs that the, 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 the player count skyrockets and then quickly falls as they run out of content. And the developers will put the game on life support. So let's check out how this game's doing. I normally go with uh, SteamDB because it's a good idea of trends. Even though there are people that are playing on launcher and not on the Steam client, it's a good idea of the trend. If the Steam figures are dropping, you would assume the overall figures are dropping. Not like for like, but it, it's, it's a good estimation and it's accurate. When we look at this, the game is really holding steady, which I was surprised at. I thought it would be in decline, even when you stretch it out over the whole lifetime of the game, uh, or the whole lifetime of what it, how long it's been on the Steam platform. It's really holding steady with 30,000 active players. I, I just want you to know if you are new to the game, this what to expect. This isn't one of the big five MMOs. This isn't WoW, this isn't Final Fantasy, where they're rec recording like record in the multi-millions of player counts. This is a niche, grindy MMORPG. I think games like Lost Ark coming out that are doing really well, or at least skyrocketed on release, will do games like this a justice because they get people are going to get a taste for this kind of Eastern MMO playstyle with the progression, the the grinds, and hopefully that helps. But this game is holding very steady. Thirty thousand average players on Steam. I checked out an MMO population. Not sure how accurate this site is, but they rank it as the fifteenth biggest MMO with 225,000 active players. All I can say is from playing it, everywhere is populated. The cities are full of people. Guilds are doing stuff. There's always people running around, selling, trading, killing each other. There, there's a lot going on. This feels alive. You ride your horse, you ride past other people. You go into the towns, you see people trading and bartering, and you, you go along a road and you see a wagon full of goods going past you from another player. This is a populated MMO. I, I, I don't know how else to put it, but there's a lot of servers, there's a lot of things going on, and I've never felt alone. Even though a lot of this game can feel lonely in that you don't need other players, it's always felt alive. So overall, is Black Desert worth playing in 2022? 100% yes. If you're worried about the game being too overwhelming, take it from someone who's been overwhelmed and quit before, it's it's 100 times better make a seasonal character go through it slowly let it give you everything let it teach you everything that the story alone will push you in the right direction to learn everything if you're worried about the cash up unless you're planning on going pro or trying to make it your second job and keep up with these big number one of something in the server i wouldn't worry about it you can really play this for so long without worrying about having to spend money if you, there's something you like and you want to buy it fine i really don't think you need to though not if you're playing it casually or you're just starting out maybe at end game if you know you're getting fed up and you want that boost it is what it is one thing to worry about is the heavy grinds in rng if you don't like either of those things they are integral to all parts of this game if you hate random systems they're everywhere you'll see spinning wheels everywhere you'll see randomized things everywhere and if you don't like that this game's probably not for you and if you don't like grinding it's probably not for you if you can get past those or you like those systems i personally do maybe i'm weird this is one of the most alive visually stunning mmorpgs out there with one of the most fun and engaging combat systems and immersive life skill systems of any mmorpg i've ever played there's plenty of other things I could have covered in this video. PvP, story, social stuff, uh, guilds, side quests. And I can make a deeper video if you really want it. And let me know in the comments if you do. But I just wanted to talk about the big things that stood out to me as a new player. I really hope you've enjoyed this video. I would love to know what you think of Black Desert online in the comments. And if you want to see more, let me know. Other than that, guys, take care. And I'll catch you in the next one.